Hello. Hello, Facebook. Just going to give it a few minutes. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Ah, we are live. Yes, we are live. Okay. Hope everyone's really well. Hope everyone's having a good good day. I'm having a really good morning actually. I've just been um <laughs> just been dancing around like a loony bin. There's always that it's always that moment that you uh before you're about to do something you have like uh, 15 minutes and you don't really want to do anything you don't want to start anything so you're like well oh, what do I do I know I do <laughs> I stick some music on and I have a dance so that's what I was doing today hey Alex <laughs> oh lovely hey Patricia Oh, lovely to see. I'll just give it a few more minutes. Yeah. So I think I just need to, I needed to do some breath work, breathing exercises before I came on. I realised because I've been dancing, I was too, too active. I was like, I just need to calm myself down a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Dance, dance, dance. Always. Even if you've got like, I do it sometimes if I'm cooking and I've got a few minutes just before, you know, if you're waiting for something, it's just, it's just a great way to get that energy moving around, around your body. Yeah. So that's obviously not what I'm here to talk about, but I just thought I'd share that. So today, how long is it? Yeah. Okay. So today, as you know, I'm going to be uh, talking about busting some meditation myths now yeah so uh yeah it could be about 30 minutes I don't think it'd be much longer than that depends on what I uh, I chat on this <laughs> um it's yeah I think meditation is something that I think a lot of people want to do but then they have resistance to it so in whatever way it be so if that's something if that's you if you find resistance then this is definitely the workshop for you so if you're wanting to kind of incorporate it daily into your practice practice then this is definitely for you um i'm just going to chat a little bit at the beginning i'm just going to go through the this five myths that i'm going to be chatting about i'm just going to say what they are i'm just going to tell a little bit about my own story with meditation and then i'm going to chat about the myths so yeah um so hopefully by the end of it you'll basically know know a little bit more about meditation and hopefully you will feel better about incorporating it into your daily life you'll be more clear about you know what it is and how it can help you which is a big one so the five the five myths that i'm going to be busting are right so the big one, number one, is I don't have the time. Yeah, I hear this one a lot. Number two, I don't know if I'm doing it right. I'm gonna talk about that one. Number three, I can't clear my thoughts completely. This is another one. Number four, I cannot sit still for that amount of time. And number five, I'm too stressed or anxious to meditate. So those are the five that I will be looking at today. Um, this, this workshop is for you. It, obviously, if you want to make changes, if you're ready to implement changes into your life, then this workshop is definitely for you. If you're, if you're not willing to make that change, if you don't want to, or you don't believe that you can relearn old habits, <laughs> this is not for you. Because change is possible. You know, there's that saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You most certainly can. I'm here to say it. You most certainly can. No matter what age you are, you can definitely learn how to implement new habits. And habits are only created in 21 days. That's really not that long. So I'm just going to chat a little bit about myself and my own meditation journey. 
I started, I'm not sure what I started, I'm not sure the exact time, but I think I started doing it around when I was at university. And I started when I was um, at university when I was 28, and we had a, a dance teacher that was very into kind of meditation within the sessions. And we used to do it sort of here and there, you know, just laying, laying on the floor. And, it, you know, it was nice. I quite liked it. You know, I was uh, probably not getting much out of it at the time it was just a nice time just to sit sit down really um but I don't think I realized the benefits of it at the time I think I used to do it after that I used to sort of tag it on to the end of a yoga session if I was doing some yoga I used to sort of go oh I'll, I'll just I'll just um I'll just lay here for a few minutes and just think and it helped in a way but that was like more me trying to, I'm more, I did it more as a cure than as a preventative measure. You know, I think that, you know, if I was feeling a bit anxious or feeling a bit stressed out or frustrated or angry at something, I would meditate because I thought, oh, that's going to help me. You know, I'll meditate because I'll do it. And, and not actually knowing the benefits of actually doing it daily and keeping up with that practice is really, really good. So. I think when it was it, it was 2000 and oh, let me get this right, 2019 when I first probably started and I went, OK, I'm just going to start doing it daily. Even if it was just five minutes, I was just like, yeah, just going to start doing it daily. And I thought, no pressure on myself. No, you know, I don't want to do these half an hour, hour long meditations. I was like, no, just be start really small. But I kept on seeing the word consistency popping up when, it, when I was reading about how can this help meditation it was always a daily practice I thought okay I'm gonna give this a go I mean what, what what's what's there to lose really you know I was in a place where I wasn't feeling great I, I wasn't feeling joy or excitement and I thought yeah I'm gonna give it a go it seemed like quite an easy thing to implement into my life you know it was just five minutes a day and there was a gradual process I, you know I didn't have the big oh my god this is an amazing moment you know like I think people sometimes want from these type of practices you know we always want the big aha moments the big you know the high vibe kind of feelings and it's more of a kind of gradual sort of trickling in you know it, it's more like you don't notice it until you sort of look back at where you started and there was a point where I sort of suddenly thought oh okay I found it easier to go into the meditation I was more aware of my body, sort of body-mind connection. I felt calmer. I felt that I wasn't reacting to things. I wasn't being triggered by things as much. And I, I definitely started to feel joy again. I found it easier to be mindful. I sort of had more control over my emotions. And I definitely had a, had a more balanced mindset. So it helped in so many ways that, you know, looking back, I was like, yeah. Yeah, that really helped. Obviously, you know, through the research I've done, I know that meditation does help as well in lots of ways that we don't even know. You know, there's lots of there's all sorts of activities that are going on in the brain that we, we can't even see. And that's what's so amazing about it, you know, and it can literally change the brain structure for, for the better. So it's um, it's just so good. And yes some of the sort of brain sort of how it can help the brain sort of occurs because it well it can happen sort of after years of meditating and that can seem quite daunting but actually some of them can occur even in a few weeks they can literally can literally change in just a few weeks of practicing and these are all great i mean i'll, I'll probably i won't go into detail about everything about well, how it can help but it it can and it can help the the physical benefits and it can help in the way that um, how we overcome stress. So stress is a, it, oh gosh, it's the word we hear all the time in the modern day, you know, stress. You know, everyone's a little bit stressed, you know, especially after the last year and a half we've had. It's been awful. And that those high levels of stress in the body are really not good for us. They're really not good to be at this level of stress sort of you know constantly throughout the day and there's all sorts of things that can trigger us um you know in this, this day and age there's there's so much stuff going on 
and it's it basically surges um basically the stress uh, it, st it stimulates the sympath sympathetic nervous system that's a lot of s's and it causes a surge of natural stress hormone hormones so yeah, this is this is not great for the body. It causes all sorts of inf inflammation, um, which is linked to all sorts of things um, like stroke, heart disease, and cancers, and yeah, all sorts of stuff. So if we're at that level constantly throughout the day, it's not good for our bodies. But when we learn meditation um, and we practice it, we learn how to trigger our parasympathetic um, nervous system, and this this is where it gets stimulated in meditation. And that oh, that releases the that well that stops the stress release being stress stress hormone being released, and it helps in so many ways. And basically, I'm just going to read some of them. So, why stress reduction is important? It can lower the blood pressure, the heart rate. It helps with oxygen oxygen consumption, and there's yeah there's so many ways. Like I said that you know, learning this technique and doing it daily can really help us. And it helps us in this day and age to just learn how to kind of get rid of that, that noise, that chatter that's sort of happening around, you know, all around us all the time and just go inwards and just, yeah, be with ourselves. So in today's world, I think it's something that should definitely be, I think it should be taught. I think it should be taught in schools. I think it would be such a vital component to, in everyone's life. So, now I've chatted a little bit about uh, my story and the benefits. I'm just going to bust some of those meditation myths. <laughs> so, number one was, I don't have the time. <laughs> yes. Now, yeah, we're all we're all super busy. You know, we all have massively busy lives. You know, you, you get up in the morning, you're showering, you're breakfasting, you're getting ready for work, you go into work, you work the day, you come home, you cook, you watch Netflix or whatever. Other streaming videos are available. <laughs> and then before you know it, it's bedtime and you haven't, you know, you haven't really done much for yourself. So, you know, you're asked to do, oh, let's meditate. Oh, you know, that's another thing you think, oh God, I've got to add this to my to-do list. So it is about prioritizing. It is about prioritizing it and knowing when you can get even just five minutes. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna say if you have time to be on your phone, to watch telly, then you definitely have time to meditate. You most definitely do. And if you don't, then <laughs> that's just an excuse and you're not prioritizing it in your life so it is about choosing to do it daily you know you can set up a um reminder on your phone every day just to do it if you want to do it at the same time every day that's great also i find that helps figure out why you want to do this you know if this is something you want to implement why do you want to implement it you know is it to have less stress is it to you know feel better feel calmer not react as much you know, all those things, really get it down and get it down onto paper and figure out the why. And this will really help in you finding the motivation to actually do it. And you can literally just do it for like five minutes. It, it, you know, when you say you don't have time, sometimes you can literally just sit there, close your eyes and just take some deep breaths. And that can just literally calm. And if you concentrate on the breath, counts of the breath breathing in and out then that's all you can that's all you need to do sometimes if you if you literally don't feel like you had the time so number two is i don't know if i'm doing it right now we get we get lost in <laughs> definitely the perfectionism perfectionism of doing it i'm not doing it right i want to do it perfect and especially in this day and age you know where we're constantly bombarded with this this perfectionism of you know when we're on our social media you know we we see a lot of it unfortunately and you know people that sit cross-legged but like oh I meditate for hours and it's like oh that's just not realistic but you know you get kind of trapped into sort of how it looks and how it feels and too many questions kind of pop up 
um, which I will go into in the next one about sort of the thoughts. And you do worry about it. You worry about I doing it right. Am I, am, am I clearing my thoughts and all, all the stuff? And the main thing on this is to not be hard on yourself. To not be hard on yourself, to literally just go, OK, I'm just going to close my eyes. Sit however I want to sit. It doesn't have to be in a cross leg position. Find whatever position. If it's laying on the floor, laying on your bed, lay, sitting in a chair, you can, yeah, as long as you can relax and find a place where you, you know, you can completely relax your body and you just close your eyes. And, and that's, that's a great place to start. You know, it's a great place to start. And you'll find that the more you do this, like I say, it's a practice. The word practice is always in there. And it's about practicing it daily. And you do find the more you do it, the more you do it daily, the easier it gets, the quicker you can get into that state. And then you might find that it, you know, it lasts a bit longer or you want a bit more time. It's less about doing it right. And it's more about staying consistent at the beginning, I think. So. Number three is I can't clear my thoughts completely. <laughs> and I think there is a massive mi misconception about meditation that you've just got to close your eyes and suddenly, you know, you're, you're not thinking of anything, <laughs> which is actually, it's really hard to do. And especially at the beginning, but even me, myself, I, you know, practiced probably solidly for about two years and, there's still moments, there's still moments even now where, you know, I close my eyes and I'm like, oh, you need to do that. You need to do this. And oh, what about that? What are you having for your tea? Oh, all, all sorts of things pop up. And I just I just roll with it. And when that happens, you just notice it. Your mind is like a monkey and it will jump, little monkey mind. It will jump from one thing to another. And you just need to just notice it. Notice the thought not have any reaction to it, not put any emotion on it and just let it pass out, pass out of your mind. Just like, like clouds. I like, like to use the analogy of clouds passing in the, in the sky. And you just, yeah, see them pass. You might get another one pop up again. You might get the same one pop up again and you just keep on doing this. And it might, might feel frustrating at first, but the same as the one before, the more you do this, the easier it gets. And like I say, I still get days like that. And I'm just kind to myself and understand that there will be days like that. And you also may get um, visualizations or colors pop up, which is which is great. And just, you know, whatever happens in that moment, it's just about observing and being aware. And I also get I get great ideas when I'm meditating because it, it's almost like I get rid of the outside distractions and I go inwards and it it's like my mind does a little bit of sorting for me and it's like oh what about this idea and if that happens and you think oh I really want to write that down do that it's okay to do that literally open your eyes write down the thought and then close your close your eyes again and you can just go back in into the meditation you don't have to you know keep your eyes closed the entire time because you'll just be thinking of it and thinking trying to remember it so Number four is I cannot sit still for that amount of time. So, again, like what I was saying before, <laughs> you know, it can be quite uncomfortable to sit in a cross leg position for a certain amount of time. I struggle with that. I definitely, my hips start to ache, and I don't sit like that in a meditation. Maybe if it's for a few minutes, I can manage, but anything longer than that. I sit, I sit in a chair, you know, and that's fine. I just, wherever my hands fall naturally, I just let them fall naturally. And as long, you know, if you keep your spine straight, if you're in a sitting position, so um, your head's above your heart and your heart's above your hips, that's usually a really good upright position to be in. You just need to find a place where you can relax for at least just a minute. Like I said before, you know, this could be in, in a bed, in a chair, wherever you find it could be in your car maybe you've got a few minutes in your car just to sit and close your eyes and just relax 
And if if you are sitting in a position that you find uncomfortable and you're like, oh, oh, my back's talking to me or whatever, you know, you suddenly get a, like a <laughs> your foot goes to sleep or something. You can keep if it's safe to do so, you can keep your eyes closed and just just move position, you know, just just very slowly move position. You don't have to stay in this rigid. Sometimes I like, you know, even when I'm, you know, when I'm starting a meditation, I like to maybe roll my roll my shoulders back or maybe do a, a, a few neck rolls just just to kind of get me in my body. And that, and that kind of helps as well. And also there are types of meditation you can do or it's probably considered what's well, more sort of mindfulness meditation you can do where you know there is movement involved so maybe putting on some music when you meditate can be a great great thing to do or or moving your body to music that's a great way to be mindful if you're listening to the music walking in nature so these are all great ways of connecting your body and your mind and sort of relaxing into the space it doesn't necessarily have to, have to be completely still so the last one is i'm too stressed or anxious and so what we were talking about before this is really important you know this is this is an important one, but it's kind of like a catch-22 one as well, because you're sort of, you're too stressed to meditate, but then when you go to meditate and you're stressed, it kind of makes you more stressed, because <laughs> you, cause you might be thinking, I'm not doing it right, <laughs> so it makes you worse. So the best thing to do with this is to, is to find a place where you can meditate, where you have no distractions. Turn off that phone. I know we, we like pin to our phones all the time, but turn it off and make sure you're going to have no distractions. If you need to go into a different room and close the door, that's a great way to do it. And so it's just you. I find a really good way of, of you know, if I am feeling a bit stressed is to do um, breathing, breathing meditation, breathing exercises, because it gives you something to focus on. So you're focusing on the, the counts of the breath. So that's that's a really good way. And a really good one to remember for stress relief is the, the sort of one to two ratio. So that would be if you breathe in, this is all done in the nose. So if you breathe in for four, no, sorry, it's breathing through the nose and out through the mouth. So if you breathe in for four and you breathe out for eight, so it's like a one to two. So if you breathe in for five, you breathe out for 10. And what this does is it activates the parasympathetic system, which is what I was talking about earlier, which is your rest and relaxation, relaxation system in the body. So it really helps to calm and relax the mind. And like I say, because you're co concentrating on the um, on the counts, you, you then have something to concentrate on. So you're not sort of thinking about all the things that are making you stressed or anxious. And in the same way, having other things to concentrate on if you are feeling stressed and anxious would be to either add music, you could just put some nice soothing music on to meditate to, it gives you something to listen to. There are also, I mean, I don't even know, there are probably thousands and <laughs> millions of guided meditations on YouTube. So I would really recommend going and have a look at them. There are so many and that's they are really good because then you've got somebody's voice that you can listen to um that you can concentrate on and there are so many out there and i would highly recommend if this is something you're going to do try and find one that really works for you because i know sometimes people don't like certain you know i've tried certain guided meditations and i'm like oh i don't know you know i'm not sure about that one if you keep going you will find ones that resonate with you um, and like I say, there's so many on there that, you know, you could you could be doing it for forever and it's great. And if you wanted to do longer ones as well, there's longer ones on there. But having the music and words to concentrate on can just really help with the with the sort of without worrying about the stress and anxiety. So I think when it comes to meditation, I always I always use the two C's. Well, I use, I use this in a lot of a lot of my practices. Um, definitely my self self love practices 
And these are curiosity and consistency. <laughs> and curiosity because it's really important to stay curious. Like I said just before, you know, if if something's not resonating with you, try a different approach. You know, you think you've tried that that guided meditation and all well, that certain voices might annoy you when you, you know, when you try to listen to them. Try a different one. Try a different method. There's ones on there for sleep, for letting go, for chakras. You know, you could try the movement meditation, you could try breathing meditation. There are so many, there's such a vast variety of ways out there. And it's about staying curious and, and finding one and going, oh yeah, that that yeah, that feels good. That resonates with me. And the more you do that, the more likely you are to keep doing it as a daily practice. Because it's something then you need to go, oh yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to doing this. I know for me, I like to do my meditation just before I go into my sort of evening. It's a nice sort of cutoff point. So if I've been working during the day, you know, I'm very in my head, I'm working at my computer. I might, at the end of the day, I go, all right, I just turn my, turn my laptop off, maybe do a bit of yoga or dancing, and probably if it's me. <laughs> and then I meditate. And it's a really good way for me to transition into the evening. And it's a good way of clearing my mind and, and I, ah, okay, now I'm ready for my evening. And I go into the evening a lot, probably a lot more relaxed and I'm not thinking about all the things that I still need to do for that day. So it's really good. And obviously consistency, and I've spoken about this already, consistency is definitely key when it comes to meditation. And I, I cannot stress this enough. And it, like I say, you can feel like you're not really doing much. You can feel like, oh, this is just five minutes a day. It doesn't feel like it's doing much. But I, I can say hand on my heart, that meditation changed my life, like, like 100%. And it was doing it daily. And like I say, I didn't get those big like, oh my God, this is amazing moments. But it was, it was just something that because I did it daily, I now look back and go, yeah, yeah, big shifts big massive shifts have happened and yeah I will probably continue to do it for the rest of my life and uh, I'm excited to grow on this journey I know I've got so so many more things to learn so yeah that's all I have for my uh for my workshop today I hope you enjoyed that um I just wanted to add on at the end so if you're if you're somebody that's wanting to learn more about meditation you're really interested and you want to implement it or you want to learn a, a deep self-worth you know find more confidence more joy in your life and if you want to be held accountable <laughs> that's a big thing you know having somebody there to sort of help you guide you mentor you on the way then you can book in a free 15 minute discovery call with me and I would be happy and we can to help and we can have a bit of a brainstorm and sort of see where you're at now and sort of see where you want to get to and see if we can come up with any sort of strategies and you know if you want to work with me you know I've done this work for solidly for about two years but the course that I'm running this could all be done in 56 days and that's that's not long, 56 days. It's an eight week program. It's called Find Your Joy. And yeah, 56 days is really not a long time. And you can begin to implement these changes in your life and see the shifts and the trans transformations that can really happen. So like I say, if you're interested, then DM me, message me. Um, if you wanna ask any questions about this, then please get in touch. I'd be so happy to help you. Ah, so yeah, this has been amazing. Oh, sorry, 50, yeah, 56 days. <laughs> I only saw the six then. <laughs> exactly, Alex. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, um, yeah, feel free to ask them. I will be so happy to help. Uh, but that's all I've got for today. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for everyone for coming. Um, if you're watching uh, the replay, hashtag replay. Yeah, so have a good day, everyone. Have a lovely rest of the re lovely rest of the Thursday. Yep, Thursday. <laughs> Goodbye.